All right, we'll start this game in just a few minutes between the Bee Diggers and Platte Valley Broncos for the Patriot League Tournament Championship. Platte Valley comes into the game with a record of 16-5, and five, as do the Bee Diggers. Platte Valley with an eight-point victory over Estes Park in the quarterfinals, 67-59, and then 56-48 last night at home against Fort Lupton, while the Bee Diggers have won games by 21 and 24 points, 62-41 to Valley. And then they defeated Frontier Academy 59 to 35. So this will be it for this particular tournament after played a bunch of games to get to this point. It's always one of the better tournaments and a very competitive one. We'll see how competitive this game is. We had two very exciting fifth place games. But then the third place games were dud. Complete duds as the Brush Girls won by 19 and the Four Lupton Boys won by 18. And then the championship game on the girls' side was a 13-point victory by Sterling. And just looking at certain patterns here. We have had in the last few games looks like the higher seed has one of the boys side for the most part obviously with the top two here in the championship but today Sterling the three beat the eight in Estes Park and the four Fort Lupton beat the six in Frontier Academy so the bee diggers are looking to reverse a trend of the higher seed winning on the boys side here today from UNC Bee Digger starting lineup, which will be introduced momentarily, is brought to you by Blowdorn Lumber. At BlowdornLumber.com, you can browse the virtual showroom, view the current sales, complete a credit application, and shop the entire inventory online. Whether you're a contractor or painting your living room at Blowdorn Lumber, you'll get the same friendly service and advice to make your job easier. Blowdorn Lumber in Fort Morgan. They are at 130 State Street. And we know the V-Diggers have gone with various lineups since head coach Ken Garcia's rotation is pretty heavy. And as for Platte Valley, the designated home team in the series because they are the higher seed. Platte Valley is coached by Jeff Meyer. B Digger starting lineup will be introduced first since they are the visiting team. And we've got a pretty decent crowd here for both sides. Of course, it looks emptier than it normally is, and that's because it is a high school event in a college facility. So you can have great support, and it doesn't really look like it when you look at all the empty seats. The Bee Diggers tonight, which got 22 points from Randy Baker last night. We'll have him in the starting lineup. Along with Jake Brown. Jeffrey Dunker, the senior guard there for the Bee Diggers as well. Bryce Needens, hopefully he's got that shooting touch back that he lost. And 6'2 senior Jacob Nichols. Those are your starters for the Bee Diggers tonight in Greeley against the Platte Valley Broncos. As for 16 win Platte Valley. Here are their starters. Parker Gilliland, a 5'11 sophomore. Along with Logan Sitzman, a 5'10 senior guard, also the state championship quarterback for Platte Valley. Then you got to watch out for the big man in the middle. 
and 6'3 sophomore Parker Jones. Along with Cameron Maxey, a 6'1 senior. 6'1 junior, Logan Swan. And that's your starting five. Gilliland, Sitzman, Maxey, Swan, and Jones. Opening tip is brought to you by State Farm Insurance, Home Auto Life and Health. State Farm Insurance is there for you and your family. Give Rug Mullen a call at 842-4555. Long time in waiting, but this game will get underway momentarily. It'll be Cameron Maxey jumping center for Platte Valley and Jake Brown for the Bee Diggers, controlled by Platte Valley. Gilliland back out to Sitzman. Gilliland three in the air off the back of the rim, and Jeffrey Dunker has the Bee Digger rebound. There's the outlet to Baker. Baker on the outside left, left of the lane, dribbled the ball. Nope, it was not off his foot, or was it? Let's see, the official's pointing the other way. We've seen this before, where the official points the wrong way. And he did that time. It was off of Baker. He dribbled the ball off his foot out of bounds. The Bee Diggers commit the first turnover of the game. Platte Valley comes the other way. Sitzman with a basketball, spinning at the top. On the outside right off of Swan, but it's retrieved by Gilliland. Gilliland against Brown. Driving is Jones, left baseline, cross-court pass, Sitzman, three in the corners, off the back of the rim, and the ball is tipped into the hands of Jones. He banks and misses an easy one. And the rebound to Bryce Needens. Here comes Brush on the right baseline. Brown down to Nichols, straight away. Needens, three in the air, is off the back of the rim. And the ball is tipped out of bounds by Randy Baker. And it goes over to Platte Valley. Yeah, this should be a very intense game throughout. Considering, as Jen said, no love lost between these teams. Gilliland kicks it back out to Sitzman. In the right corner, here is Swan. The three in the air is off the back of the rim again. And off the top of the backboard, out of bounds. And the B-Diggers have the basketball. All zeros so far. Although the teams have had their opportunities. Backcourt pressure being applied. Dunker with a basketball for the Bee Diggers. On the outside right, picked up by Maxey, dribbling towards the top. The Bee Diggers in their road maroons at the top for Brown on the outside. He'll take a three, and that's off to the right. Both teams are cold in the early going. Parker Jones grabs his second rebound for Platte Valley. Long pass to Swan, and Baker commits the foul. That's the first foul of the game. And to throw it in, just beyond three-quarters, quarters, Cameron Maxey. Maxey looking. Back out to Gilliland. Gilliland against Baker, right of the lane, in the right corner for Sitzman. Dribbles to his left, free throw extended in the right corner for Jones. Jones against Nichols, picks up the dribble, beat Diggers in a man-to-man. -man. Here's Maxey back out to Jones. Swan left of the lane, kicks it back out to Gilliland against Dunker. Swings it near the top for Swan. Swan against Brown. Back in that right corner for Maxey. Maxey lobs it down low for Jones. Poked out of bounds by Dunker. And Platte Valley retains possession. Well, that was a good job by Jeffrey getting a hand in there because there was no rotation on the backside to help. So the B-Diggers still on defense here. Maxey left corner for Sitzman. Wide open three. He'll take it. He'll make it. Logan Sitzman drills the triple. Platte Valley scores the first points of the game. Baker into the front court. Jump pass to Needens. Down low to Nichols. Here's Brown left baseline. Kicks it back out to Baker. Baker between his legs. In the lane. Baker backs it out to Nichols. Right of the lane. Over to Brown. 15-footer. Back rimmed it. And Parker Jones already has grabbed his third rebound. And the other way. Here come the Broncos. Jones hands it off to Swan along the left baseline. Tries to spit it back out. Knocked away by Brown. And then Brown threw it right into the hands of a Bronco. There's a foul in the backcourt. It's actually a frontcourt foul because Platt Valley had the basketball. The foul is committed by Jacob Nichols. That's his first. Stop, shop, and save at the Brush Grocery Cart. At 1302 West Edison Street in Brush, you can pay your public service bill and access Western Union. 
Jones with the inbounds pass back out to Gilliland. Dribbles to his left, dribbling left baseline all the way. Throws it right corner. Over to Maxi. Here's Swan. Swan with the basketball against Rosenbrock, who checked it for Brush along with Garcia. And then turning the ball over was Swan. Both teams with one turnover. 5.07 to go, opening quarter. And Platte Valley with a 3 0 lead. Dunker pressured in the backcourt by Maxi. Dunker on the outside left. Kicks it to Garcia. Garcia right base on the corner. Rosenbrock, three in the air, is off the back of the rim. Rebound to Baker. Baker in the lane. Back out to Nichols. Nichols fakes over to Baker. He'll take the long shot. And that is well short. And Logan Sitzman has the rebound for Platte Valley. Still 3 0. 4.41 to go in the first. Sitzman right in the lane. Lost the basketball. And Dunker has it for the B Diggers. Long pass to Baker. Baker was foul. Boy, they're going to call that intentional because he was just grabbed around the waist. That didn't look like there was any play for the ball whatsoever. No, that was a desperation foul. It should have been an intentional call, I believe. Yeah, that's pretty lousy that they didn't call that intentional. I mean, there was no play. He just wrapped them. And that foul was committed over there by Gilliland. Here's Baker leaning, and he missed, but he's fouled by Swan. So Baker to the stripe. And the B-Diggers are going to need almost three and a half minutes to score their first point of the game. That's assuming Baker can hit at least one free throw. This free throw's up, and that's good. The B-Diggers are on the board. Colorado Plains Medical Center, where expertise matters, is a level three trauma center. Colorado Plains Medical Center is ready to handle any type of emergency. Second free throw is around and good. It drops in for Randy Baker. Platte Valley 3, brush 2. 4.28 to go in the opening quarter. And Baker strips Gilliland. Baker all the way will lay it up and in. And the beat diggers have claimed a 4-3 lead off the strip. Gilliland across the timeline, in the lane, in the left corner for Jones. Back out, Sitzman, three in the air, is off to the right. And the rebound is chased down by Parker Jones, and he walked. Glad Valley's committed four turnovers, and that's because of that pressure defense implemented by the B-Diggers. Austin Garcia to throw it in, in the front court to Rosenbrock. Rosenbrock back out to Garcia, calling out the play for the B-Diggers. Garcia dribbles to his right, back out to Nichols. Nichols, bounce pass to Rosenbrock, turns, hooks it up, and he misses. Rosenbrock with a rebound, puts it up and in. Rosenbrock was not to be denied, and the Bay Diggers are on a 6-0 run. Brush 6, Platte Valley 3, 3.45 to go in the opening quarter. Jones on the outside right, guarded by Nichols, dribbling to his left. Free throw line extended, back out over there to Gilliland. Gilliland, jump pass, right corner, Sitzman 3 in the air, is off the back of the rim. Rebound to Jones. He hooks and he scores. Parker Jones has scored for the first time. He's got five rebounds. And the Broncos trail by one, six to five. Baker on the high left to Garcia. Dribbling to his right. Garcia again setting up the offense for Brush. Garcia behind his back in the lane. He fades. He shoots. He misses in and out. And the ball is tipped into the hands of Cameron Maxey. Here's a long front court pass for Gilliland. Left of the lane, scoops it up, and in off the glass. What a move. Well, and he had a big game against them last week. 7-6, to six, Platte Valley. Garcia, front court pass for Dunker on the outside right. Dunker hooks it up and in off the glass. Dunker, a little five-footer. B-Diggers have reclaimed the lead. It's 8-7, to 7, 2.39 to go. Gilliland, jump pass, left corner, Maxi. Back out to Sitzman. Baseball pass, cross court, three in the air is up and around and no good. And Jacob Nichols has the rebound, missed by Matthew Hoffman. R brush the other way, Rosenbrock banks and scores. Wonderful pass by Randy Baker, holy cow. Oh, he found him down low. And Brush now with a three-point lead, 10-7. to seven. Sitzman in the outside left, 2.50 to go in the opening quarter in this Patriot League Tournament Championship game. Sitzman all the way, he's fouled on the floor. And Dunker was all over him, committing his first. The Bay Diggers with three team fouls. Platte Valley has two. And Trey Cranson checks in for Brush. Jason Sigmund for Platte Valley. Maxi to throw it in. Left baseline for Sigmund. Sigmund against Nichols. Jump pass back out to Hoffman. 
Hoffman retreating towards the timeline, guarded by Cranson. Hoffman in the right corner for Sigmund, back to Hoffman, and he banks and he misses, and Rosenbrock goes high for the rebound, his second. Rosenbrock to Garcia. Garcia on the high right, at the top for Cranson. Dribbles to his left, now to Rosenbrock in the left corner. Back to the top to Garcia. Garcia in the lane for Rosenbrock, he's double teamed, then he got stripped away. The B-Diggers commit their second turnover. Sitzman the other way, bounce pass for Sigmund, kicks it back out, Gilliland three in the air, and it's in and out. These are tight rims, and Jeffrey Dunker grabs the rebound for Brush. Here come the B-Diggers the other way, Rosenbrock with the basketball across the timeline. 1.23 to go, opening quarter. Dunker, bounce pass, Cranson banks it in to the left of the basket for Trey Cranson. The B-Diggers with their biggest lead of five, 12 to seven, a minute 13 to go in the opening quarter. Sitzman the other way, just beyond midcourt, met by Dunker, fouled by Dunker. And Dunker more than likely will find a seat on the bench, committing a second foul. And that's a foul you don't need to commit. I mean, he's not happy about it, but he's got to be a little bit more careful than that when you're well, 40 feet away from the basket. Yeah, the last one he wasn't happy about either, but even if you're going to stick your hands in there in front of the officials and they're going to call it, then you have to make an adjustment as to how you play defense. Absolutely. Sitzman throws it in to Maxi. He's a very solid defensive player. That one just didn't work in his favor. Maxi with the basketball against Rosenbrock on the outside right to Hoffman. Hoffman dribbles to his right, bounce pass to Sigmund against Nichols, double team, stripped by Cranston. Oh, they're going to call Cranston for the foul. B-Digger fans didn't like it, but it's a foul against Trey Cranston. That'll be his first. It is the team's fifth with 55.9 seconds to go. Opening quarter, B-Digger's up by five. On the outside right, Sitzman. Bounce pass in the right corner for Gilliland, dribbling to his left. Jump pass down low for Sigmund. Turns, shoots off the side of the backboard. Nichols with a rebound. Hands it off to Garcia. Here come the B-Diggers the other way. Garcia in the lane, all the way, scoops it up, back rim, no. Rebound to Cranson. Cranson, bounce pass to Garcia. As the B-Diggers reset, Garcia takes the three, misses. Rebound to Nichols, he banks and misses. Rebound to Nichols, scoops it up, he misses again. Here is Garcia, he puts it up and in! And a foul! Garcia to the line. And that was tremendous offensive rebounding. Well, and they had both sides covered. That was uh, outstanding positioning by the Beat Diggers. And the Beat Diggers now are on an 8-0 run. That's Austin Garcia to shoot the free throw. The junior bends, shoots, connects. Rush 15, Platte Valley 7, 22 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Gilliland with the basketball, and he runs right into Garcia. That's going to be a defensive foul. Garcia commits his first 16 foul. The B Diggers got to play more discipline in that second quarter because they're going to be sending Platte Valley to the line quite a bit. Well, they just need to move their feet a little bit more instead of reaching in trying to get the steal the whole time. Here is Gilliland with 15 seconds to go. On the high right with the basketball, looking down low at the top for Sitzman. Sitzman between his legs gets a pick from Jones. The B-Digger switch out very well. Intercepted by Garcia. Garcia with four, with three. On the high left with two. Throws up a runner. No good. Tip Rosenbrock. No. And that is the end of the opening quarter. With the score, Brush 15, Platte Valley 7 on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. The B-Diggers with a 15-7 lead as we head to the second quarter in this Patriot League Tournament Championship game. It'll be Needens, Rosenbrock, Baker, Brown, and Garcia for Brush. Gilliland, Jones, Sigman, Sitzman, and Maxi for Platte Valley. Brush basketball, Garcia across the timeline for the B-Diggers. Swings it left side to Baker. Baker in the left corner for Rosenbrock. Rosenbrock to Garcia in the lane. His floater's up and short. And the ball is rebounded by Brown. B-Diggers are killing Platte Valley on the boards. Here is Baker's runner up and no good, but he's fouled. Yeah, Brush is dominating on the boards right now. Cameron Maxey commits the foul. Well, an adjustment I see from the Beat Diggers from last time we played Platte Valley was that they're just attacking the boards. Last time it seemed like Platte Valley dominated the boards and wouldn't let us get a second, third, or fourth shot. Right now the B-Diggers unofficially have 14 rebounds to 7 for Platte Valley. Second free throw after Baker made the first one is up and good. 
And Brush is now on an 11 nothing run. They were down 7-6. Now they lead 17-7. Gilliland left of the lane all the way. Jump pass down lower. Was he going up? He was going up, but he got fouled as he missed. So more than likely this 11 nothing run will be stopped as Jake Brown commits the foul. Well, and Gilliland was one that got a hot hand in that second half in Platte Valley. So I'm sure that Coach Garcia has made a point of singling him out so that he's got a target on him to make sure we play good defense. And the free throw is in, stopping the 11-0 run. Brush 17, Platte Valley 8. Second free throw is up, and that is off to the left. And Randy Baker snags the one-handed rebound. Baker into the front court, jump pass, left baseline for Garcia, and he scoops it up, and he missed it. Garcia goes for the rebound. What a nice play by Austin Garcia. Garcia to Baker. He slashes. He misses. And it's taken away by Sigmund. Here comes Platte Valley the other way. Gilliland goes up, and he misses, but he's fouled by Garcia. And he will go to the line. Garcia commits his second foul. Gilliland to shoot two. And the free throws up and good. Bead diggers now trail or lead, I should say, 17 to 9. Second free throw is up, and that's going to be a round and in. Rush 17, Platte Valley 10. 7.07 to go in the second quarter. Needens at the top. Bounce pass to Baker on the high left over to Needens. Needens looking high right to Garcia. Dribbles to his left. Over to Needens. Needens looks. Swings it left side to Baker. Left corner three is going to be well short. And the rebound to Parker Jones. And he was tied up by Baker. Possession arrow, Platte Valley. Jones with six rebounds in the early going. He's having to fight hard, though. There's two beat diggers for every one Platte Valley going for a rebound right now. Beat diggers will sag defensively. Platte Valley scored the last three points, but still trailed by seven. Gilliland in the lane, runs into Baker, no whistle. Here's Jones, right baseline, yes. About a seven-footer for Parker Jones. Now 17-12, to 12. Rosenbrock to Baker. Baker, crossover dribble into the front court, middle of the lane, the floater's up and short. And the rebound to Ben Mickey, he misses. Parker Jones grabs another rebound. Platte Valley can make this a three-point game with a two. 6.22 to go second quarter. Brush 17, Platte Valley 12. Gilliland, crossover dribble, runs into Baker, and that's going to be a block. Baker has committed his second foul. And that's going to be the ninth team foul. Cranston more than likely will check in for Baker, and he does. So to the line is going to be Parker Gilliland for the one and one. And the free throws up and around and good. And Platte Valley all of a sudden is on a 6 nothing run. Second free throw, yes. The B digger lead is down to three. 17-14. Rosenbrock backcourt to Cranston. Front court now to Needens. Needens left of the lane on the left baseline. Back to Brown in the left corner. Brown dribbling to his right. Back out to Rosenbrock. A 2-3 defense right now for Platte Valley. Rosenbrock with a basketball. Picks up the dribble. Bounce pass high right to Mickey. Mickey over to Cranston just beyond midcourt. The diggers are moving the ball around methodically. Left corner, Needens. Needens to his right. Picks up the dribble. Bounce pass left baseline for Brown. And was he fouled? He was. Jason Sigmund made the contact for Platte Valley. That'll be the fifth team foul. The inbounds will be Needens. In the left corner for Rosenbrock. Back out to Mickey. Left corner, Needens. He'll take the three. He will miss it well short. Rebound to Rosenbrock. Rosenbrock in the lane. Scoops it up and in. Kyle Rosenbrock now has six points in the game to go along with five rebounds. Brush 19, Platte Valley 14. That stops a 7-0 run. Gilliland spins, shoots, misses, fouled. Then Gilliland had his way in the lane. The beat diggers tried to defend it, and instead the foul was committed by Trey Cranson. That'll be a second, and this will be the seventh and eighth free throws that Gilliland attempts in the quarter. If the beat diggers can stop him, they'll be in 
very good shape. Well, and I don't think they were quite ready for him to come that fast through the lane. And the free throw is short. They didn't get him pinched off before he got inside the paint. Your one-stop center for home improvement project, Ackley Building Center, 1402 Mill Street and Brush. For flooring, paint, tools, appliances, and more, Ackley Building Center. Second free throws in the air, and that's in. Rush 19, Platte Valley 15, 527 to go, second quarter. Needens trapped in the backcourt, dribbles out of traffic. Just across midcourt, looking for Mickey off his hand, and it's intercepted over there by Platte Valley, and the layup is up and in by Maxi. Maxi scores, and the B-Digger lead is down to two. And we got a timeout called by Ken Garcia, 30-second timeout brought to you by Greg Mullen at State Farm Insurance, Home Auto Life and Health. State Farm Insurance is there for you and your family, 842-4555. It's a 10-2 run for Platte Valley after the B-Diggers went up by 10. Well, and the B-Diggers are going to have to be remain calm when they're breaking that press. They're going to have to go to the middle and stay out of the corners. That's exactly where Platte Valley wants them to go so they can use the half-court line as another defender and get them trapped. And for Platte Valley, it'll be Maxi Swan, Colt McDaniel, who created that turnover along with Parker Jones and Parker Gilliland. The Bay Diggers break the huddle with Rosenbrock, Cranson, Brown, Needens, and Mickey. Bay Digger basketball with 5.08 to go, second quarter. Cranson to throw it in. Over to Rosenbrock. Here is Needens. Front court pass now to Cranson. Cranson on the outside left of the basketball. On the left corner for Mickey. Bounce pass to Cranson. Lost it. Got it back. Maintains the dribble. Cranson looking. Feeds it to Rosenbrock. Inside to Brown. Turn. Shoots off the back of the rim. Rebound Rosenbrock. He dribbles. He has the shot blocked with a foul. Kyle Rosenbrock has been a beast here with six rebounds. And he will go to the line to shoot a deuce. They definitely missed him the last time they played. Logan Swan commits his second foul. Kyle Rosenbrock leads the B-Diggers with six points and make it seven. Yeah, he was regional wrestling championships and without him the B-Diggers got beat by 21. Second free throw is in and out. And the rebound controlled by Swan. All right, we got a whistle and a foul in the backcourt. Jake Brown with a second foul. And that is very unfortunate. All the way across the court, it's a double bonus. And Logan Swan to shoot a deuce. And the free throw is around and in. The B-Digger lead is down to 2, 20 to 18, with 4.48 to go before the break. Second free throw is up, and that's good. 20 to 19. Cranson in the backcourt gets it to Needens. Needens holding the ball up high. Front court pass to Cranson. Here's Rosenbrock back to Cranson. Cranson with the basketball near the top. Lobs it to Needens on the outside left. Cross court to Brown. Penetrates right baseline. Kicks it back out, but he thought a teammate was there. And instead, nobody was there. Turnover number four. Platt Valley, incredibly enough, can take the lead. Jeffrey Dunker checks back into the game. And he replaces Jake Brown. Well, let's see if the B-Diggers can put together a run midway here through the second quarter. Gilliland with the basketball on the high right to Jones. Jones back out to McDaniel. Here is Swan, left baseline. He's cut off. And then he had the ball stripped beautifully by Needens. Taken away by Rosenbrock now. Platte Valley the other way. Cranson looked like he dribbled the ball off his foot, but he got it right back over to Needens. Needens, left wing three in the air. Good for Bryce Needens. He's so he, much better when he can catch it and shoot. Oh, yeah, he drilled the trifecta. Beat Diggers lead by four, 23-19. Parker Jones right at the free throw line. Lost the ball, got it back over to McDaniel. On the high left, Gilliland guarded by Dunker. Gilliland dribbles into the lane, and then an, a blocking foul. Holy Mahungus, as he tried to pass to Cameron Maxey. The foul is on Rosenbrock, but boy. I, I disagree with that one. I thought Rosenbrock took that one square in the chest. He was oh, he set. Did. He was there all day. He did. 
It'll be a double bonus, and the Bee Digger's got a bad break there. Gilliland to shoot two. Yeah, he even have his, had his feet set, which is, you know, as I've explained before, the rule is you just have to take it square. The free throw is in. Rush 23, Platte Valley 20. Second free throw up coming, and that is off the back of the rim. And the rebound to Ben Mickey of Rush. Dunker across the timeline at the top of the basketball. Dunker retreats. Dunker looking, still looking, lobs it left side for Needens, fakes the three, dribbles left baseline, he's cut off, jump pass to Mickey. Mickey gets a defender in the air, in the lane, bounce pass to Rosenbrock, straight away to Mickey, and then Mickey traveled. The B-Diggers have committed their fifth turnover, six for Platte Valley. 3.21 to go second quarter in this Patriot League Tournament Championship game. Platte Valley trails 23-20, Parker Gilliland the other way, swings it right side for Jones. Jones spinning on Mickey in the right corner. Swings it cross court. Poked away by Dunker. It's still loose. Taken by Jones. Platte Valley retains possession. Swan to Jones. Back out to Swan. Swan on the outside right. Bounce pass to the free throw line for Maxi. Maxi pulls up 14 foot floater. Is off the bottom of the rim. The putback is missed by Parker Jones. And the rebound is grabbed by Ben Mickey of Brush. Bryce Needens on the outside left. Fakes the pass, throws it cross court to Cranson, penetrates right base on all the way. His floater is off to the left, rebound to Cranson. Cranson a dunker, 12 footer left baseline, back rim. Parker Jones has another rebound. So the other way, here comes Platte Valley. Jones already with nine rebounds in the early going, 2.24 to go. Second quarter, brushed by three. Maxi in the outside right to McDaniel. McDaniel in front of the B Digger bench, dribbles to his left. On the outside right to Jones, guarded by Mickey, looking down low, dribbles, spins on Mickey, leans, kicks it back out, but did the same thing that Jake Brown did. Thought a defender was there, and he threw it away. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've seen that in a game by both teams. Well, especially in the same quarter. Seven turnovers for Platte Valley, B Digger basketball. Nadens throws it into Cranson. Cranson just beyond midcourt, maintaining the dribble, swings it left side to Needens. Needens back out to Cranson. Cranson, baseball pass to Needens, fakes the left corner, three and travel. Four turnovers in the quarter for Brush, six in the game. Unfortunately, a wasted possession. And Platte Valley takes a 30 second timeout. With the B Diggers up 23 to 20. With a minute 52 to go. You want your vehicle and farm equipment to be in top shape, so make sure you take care of them. Purchase the best quality parts and accessories at great prices at your local Napa store, Central Auto Parts, in Fort Morgan. Bee Diggers have seven points from Rosenbrock and six from Randy Baker. Parker Gilliland is leading Platte Valley with nine points, and seven of those are free throws in this quarter. He's gone to the line 10 times. Obviously missed three based on that math. Sigmund, Swan, Maxi, Gilliland, and McDaniel for Platte Valley. They've got the ball. Cranson, Needens, Dunker, Mickey, and Rosenbrock for the beat diggers. Bounce pass to the free throw line for Maxi. Stripped away by Cranson. Excellent defensive play by Cranson. Cranson. Middle of the lane, jump pass down low, tipped away, intercepted by Sigmund. B Diggers commit their fifth turnover of the quarter. Here is McDaniel all the way, scoops it up, and he misses. And then a foul on the B Diggers. That was Rosenbrock, I believe, as going up for the tip for Platte Valley was Logan Swan. Rosenbrock commits his second. Swan to shoot two. And the free throws are rounding in. Jacob Nichols checks in for Kyle Rosenbrock with the beat diggers up by two with a minute 31 to go. Second free throw for Logan Swan is in the air, and that's in. Platte Valley trails 23-22. Dunker for the beat diggers in the backcourt. Baseball pass, left base on to Nichols. Nichols all the way is fouled as he went hard to the basket. Colt McDaniel got him across the wrist and with the body. 
nice look there by Jeffrey Dunker. Well, actually, there were two beat diggers down there waiting, so he could have gone to either side of the court, so it would have been two on one no matter what. The Nichols free throws in the air, and that's perfect. <laughs> beat diggers had a 10-point lead. Early in the quarter, it was 17-7. They were up by eight after one. Second free throw is up, and that's in. Nichols two for two. Rush 25, Platte Valley 22. A minute 16 to go before the break. Maxey with the basketball. Crossover dribble. Left of the lane on Needens. Back out to McDaniels. On the outside right, Gilliland with the basketball. Bounce pass to Sigmund. Sigmund picked up by Cranston. Over to Gilliland. Gilliland to Big Daniel on the high left. On the left baseline, here's Swan. 10-foot pull up and air ball. Jeffrey Dunker has the basketball for the bead diggers. Dunker in the backcourt to Needens. We're down to 51 seconds remaining before halftime. Bounce pass on the outside left to Cranson. Cranson back out to Needens. Needens jump pass to Dunker on the high right. Cross court to Cranson with 39 seconds. Bounce overhead to Cranson holding the ball up high. B diggers don't want to force anything although Dunker's wide open across the way. They feed it to Dunker straight away. Needens fakes the three. Backs up over to Cranson. Well, Cranson had a wide open three. Didn't take it. 22 seconds to go into Dunker. He floats it up and in. Off the glass for Jeffrey Dunker. Good job of the beat diggers remaining patient on that play. Gilliland into the front court against Sigmund now. Sigmund stripped by Needens. Should be a tie-up. And possession arrow to Brush. Beat digger basketball. With 10 seconds to go, they'll have a shot to go up by seven, maybe eight. As Mickey to throw it in. Gets it into Dunker. Dunker across the timeline with six. At the top with five. Lobs it to Cranston with three. Cranston's got to get rid of it. Here is Nichols. Nichols floats it up off the side of the backboard. And that is the end of the opening half with the score. Brush 27. Flat Valley. 22. It's a three-minute break on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. Rush 27, Platte Valley 22. We'll head to the third quarter momentarily. Apologize for any dropouts digitally we've had during this game. As we try to bring in the best coverage possible on 1010 and KSIR.com. And the Bay Diggers go for their 17th win of the year. If they can duplicate the second half in terms of what they did the first half, then they'll be able to win this game. But got to stay away from things as like building up all those fouls that the Bay Diggers committed in the first half. Brush has six players in the game with two fouls apiece. In fact, Brush has committed 13 fouls to only seven for Platte Valley. Sterling girls won their Patriot League championship defeating Eaton 51 to 38 so Sterling will be hosting one of the eight class 3A regions coming up a week from today and continuing through Saturday the bee diggers could hold on they would host a region for the second straight year and hopefully give them an inside track to qualify for the elite eight which this year will be held for the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. Needens, Nichols, Baker, Dunker, and Brown for Brush. Sitzman, Swan, Gilliland, Maxey, and Parker Jones for Platte Valley. Platte Valley with a basketball to begin the second half. There's the bounce into Gilliland. Over to Maxey in the left corner for Sitzman. Sitzman double team dribbles to his left left baseline cross court pass to Gilliland right corner intended for Swan threw it behind him Platte Valley commits their 10 turnover a lot of ADs here today Steve Longwell Travis Steiner one of the best there in the Patriot League of course Jason Strau as well for Brush of course one of our favorites yes absolutely Dunker with a basketball, lobs it cross court, Needens, Needens dribbles to his right, and then his pass is intercepted by Logan Sitzman. Sitzman all the way, runs into Dunker, and that's going to be a two-shot foul as he misses. That's a good call there. That one is, yes. And Sitzman to the line. 
But that was off the B digger turnover. Dunker now with three fouls. Premier Farm Credit still the lender of choice for America's farmers and ranchers. They understand and are passionate about agriculture and dedicated to serving American good times and bad. Premier Farm Credit, the gold standard in ag lending. The free throw is in by Logan Sitzman. Second free throw, yes. Rush 27, Platte Valley 24. The pass into Nichols. Jump pass, that is tipped away. Intercepted by Maxey. Left of the lane, leans, banks, misses. Rebound to Needens, a brush. Bay Digger's got to be careful. Nichols to Brown. Back out to Baker. Baker left of the lane, slashes, fades, shoots, misses. And Gilliland with a rebound, stripped by Baker. The Bay Diggers force that turnover into Brown. He scoops it up, back rim, no. Parker Jones tied up by Nichols. Possession arrow, brush. Well, they're getting into the lane. We just got to finish the shot. A very intense 58 seconds to open up the third quarter. Needens right baseline. Baker shot is up and no good. And a strong side rebound controlled by Cameron Maxey, his second. Platte Valley can tie it with a three. Still only five field goals in the game for Platte Valley. They have 13 made free throws. Gilliland in the way, scoops it up and in. Oh, man. Bee Diggers let Gilliland go all the way. He's got 11. The brush lead is down to one. Dunker, two on one. Little floaters up, in, out. And the rebound is taken away by Maxey. Platte Valley can actually take the lead. Jump pass in the backcourt to Gilliland on the outside right. Gilliland right of the lane. Right corner, Jones, three in the air. Short. And Jacob Nichols has the rebound. Then he's fouled by Parker Gilliland. That'll be a second. The V Diggers with a 27 26 advantage. 6.20 to go in the third. It's anybody's game in this Patriot League Championship. Baker in the backcourt. Back out to Dunker. Baseball pass front court bounce. There's Nichols left of the lane. Two on two. Nichols pulls up Banks and he misses. Parker Jones with rebound number 11. On the outlet to Sitzman, jump pass, intercepted by Baker. Baker with a one-on-two, floats it up, short, and the rebound to Jones again, that's number 12. Boy, you're right, Jen, they've got the looks, they're just missing. Long pass, intercepted by Needens in the front court. Two-on-two, Needens, 14-footer foul from behind, he missed, but he goes to the line. And the foul was committed by Logan Swan. That's his third. Well, I cringe a little bit here, Jen, because Needens, we've seen him from the line lately, and it's been, it's been rough. This free throws up, and that's good. Boy, that looked like a, the Bryce Needens that we were used to seeing. Well, and sometimes, you know, as players, they start thinking about things, and they get in their own heads, and they get in their own way. So it, that was more relaxed than I've seen him in yeah. a while at the free throw line. Yeah, he wasn't thinking there. He was just performing, and he did a nice job with that free throw. Let's see if he can make it two for two. With 5.51 to go in the third, and the beat diggers up by two. Second free throw. Nice release, and that's perfect. Perfect release. Perfect shot. 29-26 brush. Needens now with five points in the game. Crossover dribble. Gitteland nearly lost it. Got it back. Swings it right side to Hoffman. Hoffman, right of the lane. Maxi shot is up and off to the right. And the ball is tipped around into the hands of Hoffman. And he traveled. Platte Valley commits their 14th turnover the fifth of the quarter. We haven't even played two and a half minutes, and they've got five turnovers in a quarter. But the B-Digger lead is only three. Rosenbrock, front court pass to Baker. B-Diggers have a three-on-three. Three. Baker right of the lane. Ten-foot pull-up. Yes! For Randy Baker, the basket maker. He's got eight. Rush back up by five. 31-26. 5.18 to go in the third. Gilliland right of the lane. He scoops it up off the glass and in. What a shot. Gilliland now with 13 as he hung in the air. Baker with the basketball, back out to Needham, still in the backcourt, front court pass to Brown, B-Diggers have a three-on-two working, Brown middle of the lane, jump pass to Rosenbrock, scoops it up, and in! Boy, those are tight rims, but it went down for Rosenbrock as it rattled around. Rosenbrock now with nine, brushed back up by five, Gilliland crossover dribble, back out Sitzman, three in the air, is off to the right, and Rosenbrock goes for the rebound, he's got it, that's his seventh. Bounce pass to Needham, Needham's front court pass to Baker, three-on-two, Baker right of the lane, 12 foot is no good. Rebound to Brown. Brown back out to Rosenbrock. Wide open three. Is around and no good. And the ball is loose. Baker to Rosenbrock. Up and in. Baker was on the ground. Timeout, Plot Valley. 
Oh, that was gorgeous. Yeah, he was getting knocked down by a Platte Valley player, and he was able to scoop it up right into the hands of our, our teammate. The Bee Diggers now lead 35-28, 4-28 to go in the third. And Baker did a tremendous job knowing he was on the floor, and he just tossed it to Rosenbrock, and he banked it in with a left hand. And that's Bee Digger basketball at its best. And right now, the Bee Diggers have been in two situations where they've had to respond to a Platte Valley run and they have executed that successfully at the end of the second quarter and now midway through the third as the one point lead is now 7 35 28 they've claimed it for fouls now they just need to contain Gilad yeah Gilad. the bee diggers only yeah. have one team foul here in the first three minutes and 32 seconds of the third and Platte Valley with two team fouls but he's able to create for Platte Valley so we've got to keep him contained that would be Parker Gilliland And here we go with Cameron Maxey to throw it in at midcourt. Gets it into Gilliland. Gilliland with the basketball on the outside right, looking, spinning. Lobs it right corner. Hoffman three in the air as well, short. And Brown had the rebound. He was fouled from behind by Matthew Hoffman. Hoffman commits his first, the team's third. Bay Diggers look very comfortable right now. And yeah, I'm not seeing any panic flipped or anything. They're, they look pretty calm and relaxed. Inbounds pass to Garcia, who checks into the game. Garcia dribbles by Hoffman up the left side, still in the backcourt. Front court pass to Rosenbrock. Rosenbrock double team, jump pass to Garcia. Garcia on the left baseline, jump pass down low for Needis. Gets a defender in the air, and then he slapped across the face. Platte Valley's 14 foul. The personal was committed by Logan Swan. Oh, check that. Oh, Parker Jones. Yeah, Swan is not even on the court. I thought I saw a 2-4. It was 2-5. Garcia to throw it in. And he lobs it to Brown. And then Brown tried to save it in. Did to Rosenbrock as he was nearly in the backcourt. Rosenbrock with a basketball. Trapped over there. Swings it back out. And it's intercepted by Maxi, And then stripped out of bounds by Baker. Tremendous defensive play. That would have been a layup, but Baker stuck his hand in there without committing well, the foul. And he got good body position. He was prepared. Like, he came around all the way and, and didn't reach in. Yeah, it wasn't a reach. Part. Yeah, it was it was clean. Maxi to throw it in. Lobs it to Hoffman at the top. On the outside left to Jason Sigmund. On the right side now to Gilliland. He's trapped over there in double team. Spins, looking. Down low to Hoffman. Hoffman fades, shoots, misses, back rim, rebound to Sigmund. He hooks it up and in. Jason Sigmund for Platte Valley scores. His first points of the game. And the ball is tipped out of bounds in the front court by Platte Valley. B Diggers retain possession. Rush 35, Platte Valley 30. With 3.22 to go, third quarter. Garcia. Again, Sitzman dribbles to his left, looks for a pick, doesn't get it, picks up the dribble, bounce pass at the top for Needens. Down low for Baker, all the way, slashes, banks, misses. Rosenbrock tips the ball out to Needens, and he takes a three, and that hits the bottom of the net and goes out of bounds. That is pulling the string. Yeah, I think the Bay Diggers wanted the ball, but there was no deflection there, just a, a miss there by Needens. Platte Valley basketball down by five with... Three minutes to go in the third. Gilliland in the lane, scoops it up all the way, off to the left. Bryce Needens with another rebound for the B-Diggers. Needens with a third. His outlet to Brown. Brown lobs it back out to Needens at the top for Rosenbrock. Rosenbrock right of the lane, in the lane. Then he's oh. fouled as he drove hard to the basket. Matthew Hoffman looked like he was the first one to make contact across the body. Hoffman commits his second. And for Platte Valley... That is their fifth team foul. The B-Diggers only with one. Garcia bounce pass to Rosenbrock. Banks it in with a left hand. Rosenbrock with a nice cut. He's got 13. Six in the quarter. And ball is out of bounds. It's off of Sitzman as the B-Diggers pressure to the backcourt. Platte Valley with their sixth turnover of the quarter and 15th of the game. Again, you can follow us on Twitter for quarter-by-quarter -quarter updates at KSIR Sports and on Facebook at 1010 KSIR Sports as well. Garcia 
On the outside right to Bryce Needens. Guarded by Gilland. Dribbles right baseline. And then he's fouled by Gilland. That'll be the 16th foul. Gilland's third personal. Garcia to throw it in with the Beat Diggers up by seven. For the second straight year, the Beat Diggers are looking to knock off the top seed as a two seed. Rosenbrock on the outside right down low for Garcia. He posts, he turns, he shoots, he misses. Off the side of the backboard with the basketball is Logan Swan. In the front court now is Gilliland, and Gilliland is fouled on the outside there. And it looks like they're going to call the foul on Kyle Rosenbrock. That'll be his third. And Jacob Nichols getting ready to check in with 2.22 to go, third quarter. Bee Diggers up by seven. Willow Coffee, Tea and Smoothies, and G Sweets Bakery offers cookies, muffins, and sweet braids. Sweet breads that has made fresh daily. Sigmund Fade shoots. Blocked out of bounds by Nichols on the right baseline. Willow Coffee, Tea and Smoothies, and G Sweets Bakery open early. 921 Edison Street and Brush open six days a week. And to throw it in is Maxi. Lobs it at the top, and Baker tips it away instead of for Gilland. He falls to the floor, and there's going to be a tie of possession. Arrow Platte Valley. Lots of contact between Baker and Gilliland, but just a tie-up situation. The Broncos retain possession. You know what the best part about that play was? And nobody got hurt. That too, but the best part was there were two beat diggers on the hustle That's play true. That's versus pl one Platte Valley player. Right. Maxi to Sitzman. Over to Maxi in the front court. Left of the lane. Maxi pulls up from 15. The floater is off the back of the rim. And Austin Garcia has the rebound for Brush, and he's fouled. And Logan Swan is thinking that was an acting job by Garcia. Unless they call it on Maxi. Let's see who the foul is called against. Maybe it's going to be on Gilliland. Well, and the Platte Valley players are kind of getting into the official spaces. They need to be careful as well or it could result in a technical here. Yeah, shortly. I didn't see who that foul was called on. Nonetheless, Garcia to the line, 17th foul. Yeah, they don't post up the individual, so if you miss it or you don't see the officials' numbers there. I think it was Gilliland's fourth. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's out of the game now. Austin Garcia with a one-and-one. One. 24 was the one that was down there. I didn't even see Gilliland. Free throw is up, and that's well off to the left, not even close. Parker Jones grabs his 13th rebound. And there's the outlet to Maxi, left of the lane, all the way, runs into Brown, offensive foul! Uh-oh, Platte Valley is not happy, but it looked like Brown took that square. Second foul there. Not a one-and-one uh, -one situation since it was an offensive foul, but the seven turnover for Platte Valley. A minute 53 to go in the third. The Bean Diggers up 37-30. to 30. Baker in the front court towards the top. Jump pass to Garcia. Garcia at the top of the three-point circle. Dribbles to his left. Left of the lane. Left corner needed. Three in the air. Is off the rim. The rebound to Brown. Brown lost it. Got it back. And he traveled. Oh, he went up too quickly. Went up a little bit too quickly. Had the ball in his grasp. And that's exactly what head coach Ken Garcia is telling him. Just go right back up. Instead, he brought the ball down, and that's what hurt him. Well, he tried to take a dribble in. And he really didn't need it, not from that no. position. Well, with his hops, he can hop over anybody. Sitzman the other way for the Broncos, to the outside right for Maxi. Maxi with the basketball, looking down low. Maxi dribbles to his right, back to his left, at the free throw line, jump pass to Sitzman, or Sigman, and then he tips it away, intercepted there by Brown. Great Another great by defensive Jake Brown. play. Yeah, great defensive play. Garcia the other way, crossover dribble. Dribbles by a defender on the outside right. Needens fakes the three. Steps in, offensive foul. That time, Needens ran over Logan Sitzman. Well, and, and Bryce has a habit of throwing that elbow out to, to protect the ball, but he sometimes gets a little high and a little forceful with that, so that's a good call. It's a very sloppy quarter here. 13 turnovers combined. Eight by Platte Valley, five for Brush. And not a lot of points either. Nope. Oh. And now we've got a whistle away from the ball. Yeah, Jake Nichols and... Nichols commits a second. With a minute three to go in the third. That's the team's fourth. Maxi throws it in. And we've got another foul. And that's an offensive foul. It's a push on Colt McDaniel. 
Well, you know, the officials have got to take control right now. This well, is getting a little bit too too touchy here. Actually, they are taking control. I mean, oh, no, 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 no. Everybody's right. like, yeah, they're, they're doing a great no, job. No, no doubt about control. it. They are. If they one. weren't, it would be bad if they weren't. One and one here for Austin Garcia. That's not constituted as an offensive foul because it was away from the ball. No, actually, the ball was even inbounded. No, not yet. That's why. Yep. So Garcia to shoot the one and one. That's the 19th foul. He missed a moment ago. He can give Brush an eight-point lead. The junior bends, spins, shoots, connects. Brush 38, Platte Valley 30. We've got a, a lot of distinctive gentlemen on this side as well. We do. And I'm not one of them. Distinctive. Oh, well. Jason Stroud, Dan Kennedy, George Muscle, second free throw is in. And George Muscle just looked down to look for that distinctive gentleman. This is the Mount there. Rushmore, the Mount Rushmore of Brush Dignitary. <laughs> Beat Diggers up by nine, 39 to 30. On the outside right is Maxi. Maxi crossover dribble in the lane, jump pass back out to Sigmund. Sigmund floats it up and off to the right. And the rebound to Parker Jones is 14th right corner three. McDaniel, but he traveled. <laughs> Platte Valley's committed nine turnovers, and they've scored eight points in the quarter. And the Bee Diggers lead by nine. And to throw it in, Garcia in the backcourt to Needens. 43 seconds to go. Needens with the basketball, pressured, looking. Backboard bounce pass to Garcia. Got it to get it across. Garcia does so. Garcia with the basketball. Jump pass to Cranston. Cranston with 33 to go. Left baseline there is Brown. Kicks it back out to Garcia. Garcia looking up at the clock. Still 26 seconds remaining. Dribbling against Sitzman. Behind his back. At the top over to Cranston. Cranston for Brush. Back to Garcia. We're down to 18 seconds remaining. Garcia with a crossover dribble right in the lane. Garcia all the way right baseline. Scoops it up, and he missed it. Rebound, Garcia. Garcia had the ball stripped away. Stripped away by Logan Sitzman. And then a steal by the B-Diggers. Cranston with five. His floater's up, no good. And the ball is loose in the floor, still loose. And we're going to have a whistle with five-tenths of a second to go. It's off the B-Diggers. So to throw it in will be Platte Valley. Cranston got... I don't know if he's got a contact issue or... Yeah, he, he, sometimes he you don't feel if it's in your eye. Well, sometimes it rolls up. He, can't, he keeps messing with it. Right. I don't know. Well, five-tenths of a second. They're not going to have a shot to take a real shot here. Jones gets it into Maxi, and he throws it about 100 feet, but it doesn't matter. It's after the whistle. We played three quarters with the score. Brush 39, Platte Valley 30. On 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. The B Diggers with a 39 to 30 lead. As we head to the fourth quarter, John Beltran with Jen Goodall. And the basketball belongs to the B Diggers. Dunker, Needens, Baker, Rosenbrock, and Nichols for Brush. Maxi McDaniel, Sigmund Jones, and Sitzman for Platte Valley. Needens with the basketball. Lob right baseline for Dunker. Back out of the bounce to. Needham straight away to Baker. Baker with a basketball. Maintains the dribble against Cameron Maxey. Crosses over. Looks back out to Dunker on the bounce. On the outside left, the chest pass to Needham. Gets a pick from Nichols at the free throw line. Offensive foul as Nichols is called for the foul. That'll be his third personal. The Bee Diggers commit their 14 turnover. Platte Valley's got 18 in the game. Keep in mind they met two weeks ago and Platte Valley won by 21. And the Bee Diggers have turned the tables. So far tonight with seven and a half to go. Maxi against Dunker. And has the ball stripped by Dunker. Dunker with a basketball. He's got a three on two, but he's going to slow it down. Boy, Dunker's got great hands. What an excellent play by Dunker. On the outside right to Needens. Down low for Rosenbrock. Rosenbrock inside to Nichols. Lost it, got it back. Back out to Rosenbrock. Rosenbrock with a basketball on the high right. Rosenbrock over to Dunker. Fakes the 15-footer. Steps in all the way. Scoops it up and in. Off the glass. Jeffrey Dunker has given the Bee Diggers their biggest lead of the night. Brush 41, Platte Valley 30. 6.53 to go in this Patriot League Tournament Championship game. McDaniel with the basketball on the outside left towards the top. McDaniel in the right corner for Maxie. Maxie puts up the shot. It's going to be well short. How about an air ball? Bryce Needens has it for the Bee Diggers. Needens to Dunker. Floats at front court for Needens. 
Needham's on the outside right. Fakes the three. Gets it back out to Baker. Now to Rosenbrock. Rosenbrock hands it off to Dunker. The Bee Diggers have allowed only eight points in nine and a half minutes of basketball here in the second half. Baker gets a pick from Rosenbrock straight away. And we got a push on McDaniel. And that'll be the 10-team foul on Platte Valley. McDaniel has committed his third personal. That one's always a touchy call, too, because whoever is setting the screen has to make sure that they stay set, and whoever is using the screen has to make sure that they go as tight off the screener as they can to get that foul called. And the Rosenbrock free throw is in. And the B-Diggers off to now a 12-point lead, 42-30. to Second free throw by the junior is perfect. The B-Diggers up by a Baker's dozen. Gilliland the other way, middle of the lane, scoops it back out to Sigmund. Right wing three, yes. Jason Sigmund, it's now a 10-point game. Six minutes to go, brush 43, Platt Valley 33. Dunker into the front court with the basketball. Dunker, crossover dribble on Maxi. back out to Needens. Needens calling out the play for the B-Diggers. Needens spinning on Sitzman. Back of the high left to Nichols, down low for Baker, post, turns, and he misses. Had the shot blocked out of there and taken away by Gilliland. And Gilliland had the ball stripped, but Sigmund has it. Now to Gilliland, fakes the three, steps right of the lane, leans, banks, scores. Gilliland now with 15. It's a 5-0 run for Platte Valley. The B-Digger lead is down to 8, 43-35, 5.26 to go in the game. Rosenbrock in the backcourt. Jump pass front court to Baker, and timeout called by Ken Garcia. 32nd timeout brought to you by Greg Mond at State Farm Insurance, Home Auto Life and Health. State Farm Insurance is there for you and your family. Give Greg Mond a call. 842-4555. You knew Blood Valley was not going to go away here. No, they. I didn't expect anything from them to stop. I mean, they're going to keep trying to plug away and chip away at the points. I am surprised that they haven't taken more threes because that was kind of their M.O. in the last week when they kind of trounced on us. Got a 5-20 run remaining in the game. Brush 43, Platte Valley 35. It'll be Jones, Maxi, Sitzman, Sigman, and Gilliland for Platte Valley. Rosenbrock, Dunker, Nichols, Baker, and Bryce Needens for Brush. Three-quarters court to the left of the B-Digger bench. Rosenbrock will throw it in. In the back court to Dunker. Dunker pressured by Maxi. Dunker across the timeline, dribbles left of the lane, left baseline, Needens wide open, 10-footer, good. Needens had an easy shot and drilled it, Needens now with 7. Brush back up by 10, 45-35. Five minutes to go in the lane, Sigmund right corner, Maxi back out to Sitzman. Jump pass down low for Jones, back out to Maxi. Jones three in the air, off the back of the rim, and Dunker has the rebound for the B-Diggers. Dunker with the outlet towards Nichols, Nichols hands it off to Needens. Needens with 4.44 remaining, crossing the timeline, double team, has the ball knocked out of bounds by Gilliland, it stays with the B-Diggers. And Needens to throw it in. Needens backcourt to Dunker on the chest pass. Dunker, court and Baker's foul from behind by Gilliland. And if I've got that correct, that's five, but let's see, I don't know if that was his fourth on the other end there, it's at least his fourth. Yeah, his fourth. So that other foul was Swan. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. And you know what? Good job of Randy Baker on that one. He felt the pressure coming, and so he did go back to that pass and to get that foul. If, if he not, had gone back been, to that, it would have been a layup. Yeah, a steal and a layup. Baker to shoot two. First free throws up and perfect. Baker now with nine, but Rosenbrock leads the bead diggers with 15. That's Gilliland's total for Platte Valley. Second free throw up coming for Baker, and that's up. That's good. Brush right, with a 12-point lead, 47-35. Four and a half to go in the Patriot League Tournament Championship game. Maxi stripped by Needens in the front court. Now to Dunker. Dunker double team. Back out to Needens. B-Diggers have a four on three. Now it's a four on two. Needens right wing to Baker. Penetrates right baseline. Leans. Shoots. Misses. Short. Oh, he had one there. And the rebound to Logan Sitzman of Platte Valley. 
Sitzman the other way on the outside left. Bounce pass to Gilliland. He falls down. He's fouled by Baker. That'll be the 16th foul. Baker commits his third personal. And the B-Diggers can afford to play very aggressively now with a 12-point lead. Well, they still don't want to get into foul fest, though, because that stops the clock and allows Platte Valley to score without the clock moving. To throw it in will be Cameron Maxey. Maxey over to Sitzman. Sitzman on the outside right with the basketball. Here is Gilliland back out to Sigmund. Sigmund to Gilliland, right of the lane, in the lane. Lean shoots, misses. He's fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Jeffrey Dunker commits the foul for the B-Diggers. And the free throw for Gilliland is in the air, and that is good. Gilliland now is 16. Trey Cranston replaces Jeffrey Dunker. He's got three fouls after that one. Second free throw coming up for Gitteland is up and good. Brush by 10, 47-37, 3.54 to go. Brown into the front court for Brush. Overhead pass to Cranston. Cranston bounce pass down low and Garcia banks and misses. And the ball is rebounded by Rosenbrock. And what's the call there? Just out of bounds on Platte Valley? Yep. B Digger basketball. Garcia calls out the play. Left corner for Needens. Fakes the three, gets a defender, penetrates, Lynch, and an offensive foul. Needens ran into Parker Gilliland. Knocked him down, but he helped him up. Yep, 15 turnovers now for Brush. Again, both teams are in the bonus, although Brush has committed eight fouls. Platte Valley now with ten. And you know, what the clock reset is at 3.36. They wanted at 3.38. The ball was inbounded but never touched, and the clock ran, and that's the reason for the adjustment. So it is Platte Valley basketball. Parker Gilliland the other way for Platte Valley. Whistle on the front court and a foul on Austin Garcia. That's his third foul. One and one for Gilliland. You know what Jen just mentioned. You're stopping the clock there. And Gilliland is an excellent free throw shooter. And that one is up and in. Yeah, we have got to make sure that we keep our poise. Don't foul. Play the ball. Gilliland now with 18. Second free throw, yes. It's only an eight-point game. Needens to Garcia. We've got three and a half to go. Garcia with the basketball. Front court pass to Cranson. Cranson on the outside right in the right corner. Here is Needens. He's going to back it out. Needens looking, spinning at the top for Rosenbrock. Back out to Garcia. Over to Rosenbrock, just beyond the timeline. Feeds it right side to Garcia. Garcia with the basketball. Dribbles by two at the free throw line. Garcia is going to spin it back out to Rosenbrock. Rosenbrock nearly fouled by Maxi. Rosenbrock looking. Bounce pass to Needens. Needens back to Rosenbrock. Under three minutes to go in the game. Brush 47. Platte Valley 39. Garcia on the outside left. Jump pass down low. Wide open. Needens and he banks and he misses. An easy one. And then going for the rebound as Needens off his hands out of bounds. I don't know how he missed that. Impossible to miss that. Nobody was around him, and he was about a foot away from the basket. He made a great backdoor cut. You know, oh, they yeah. kind of stalled. They had Platte Valley all the way up to the top. They didn't have anybody running below. Jake Brown had the one Platte Valley kid running his full head off, and, oh, that was a great play. I don't think he knows how he missed it. A reverse layup missed by Jones. He grabs the rebound. Jones now with 15 in the game. Back to Sitzman, three in the air, off the front of the rim. And Rosenbrock has the rebound. And they're going to say he walks. Boy, it looked like he was fouled. Looked like there was a foul committed. I thought he was going to call a jump ball. And to throw it in will be Maxi. 
On the left baseline, knocked out of bounds by Needens intended for Jason Sigmund. 2.32 remaining in the game. Brush, 47, Platte Valley, 39. Maxi looking. Lobs it on the outside left for Gitteland. He's double team. Jump pass. Nearly intercepted, taken by Jones. Right corner, Sitzman three, in and out. And the ball is tipped around, still tipped around, still tipped around. Into the hands of Maxi. He fades, he shoots, he scores. Timeout, Platte Valley. Well, the Bee Diggers were up by 13 not too long ago. Well, I think they need to get Randy Baker back in. He's been that defensive pressure boiler for Platte Valley. They had a lot of turnovers when he was in on for the defensive end. Rush 47, Platte Valley 41. Again, two minutes and 15 seconds to go. And for the Bee Diggers, like I said, they can get lackadaisical, and I don't think they're trying to. They had a great offensive set moments ago. Oh, it was awesome. But they could not get the layup there from Bryce Needens. They did so well just getting that overload and then finding the back door. That was a perfect time to run that. Well, let's see if Ken Garcia makes any personnel changes coming out of the timeout. That was called by Platte Valley. Brown, Garcia, Dunker, Baker, and Rosenbrock. Bee Diggers up by two full possessions. Maxi Sitzman, Sigmund, Gilliland, and Jones for Platte Valley. Garcia to throw it in to Dunker in the backcourt, double team. Baseball pass to Baker, front court pass to Rosenbrock. Rosenbrock left to the lane, he's going to back it out. Rosenbrock in the left corner for Brown. Down low for Baker. Baker, defender in the air, scoops it up short. Baker gets the rebound. Baker scoops it up and in! Randy Baker stayed with it. Baker now with 12. B Diggers up by 8. A minute 50 to go. And there's a steal by Garcia. Here is Dunker the other way. Dunker bounce pass to Baker off the glass. Too strong. And the rebound is controlled by Cameron Maxey. He's got numbers the other way. Maxey left of the lane. Had his trip by Rosenbrock. Another turnover for Platte Valley. Rosenbrock with a basketball. Right of the lane. Now towards the right corner. Rosenbrock back out to Dunker. Down low for Brown. Brown off the glass and in. And the Beat Diggers lead by 10. 51-41. A minute 23 to go in the game. Gilliland the other way. Lean shoots. Banks misses. Garcia with a rebound. Here comes Brush. Garcia trapped in the backcourt. Now dribbles across the timeline. A foul. And those will be two free throws for Austin Garcia. Maxi commits his third foul. Oh, it looks like Gilliland maybe turned an ankle. Yeah, he is limping out there. Well, he's trying to do everything at this point. He's going to be out of the game in favor of Matthew Hoffman. Might be just a dead leg. Might have got need in the quad. Austin Garcia to shoot two. ACI proudly supports local high school sports throughout Northeast Colorado. When you need ice, don't just settle for any old frozen water. ACI at any local grocery or convenience store near you and visit Morgan Community College online, morgancc.edu. Imagine your possibilities, believe in yourself, and achieve your goals with Morgan Community College as the free throw is in. And Brush is now in a 5 nothing run. And that is huge right now at this point in the game. Second free throw for Garcia. Good. The Bee Diggers are 6 out of 6 from the line in the fourth quarter. Brush 53. Platte Valley 41. We're down to a minute and 12 seconds to go. Sitzman to Jones on the outside left. Over to Maxi, defending in the air. Lean scores off the glass, about a 12-footer for Cameron Maxi. Platte Valley's going to have to foul now. Baker jump pass to Dunker in the front court. Dunker nearly fouled, no whistle. Dunker looking back out to Rosenbrock. I can't believe they're not fouling here. And it's a 10-point game. But B-Diggers have eaten up a lot of clock. Hoffman commits the foul. Rush will take it. 45.7 seconds to go. And Randy Baker at the line. Oh, no. 
Platte Valley could host a regional, but that's going to be tough now with six losses, the B-Diggers. Unless Platte Valley comes through with a miracle, we'll be hosting one of the eight regionals on Friday and Saturday. The Baker free throw is in. Baker with five points in the quarter, 13 in the game. Second free throw, swish. Rush 55, Platte Valley 43. 43 seconds to go in the game. Sitzman dribbles towards the right corner. Jump pass, cross court. Over the left hand of Jason Sigmund out of bounds. And the B-Diggers have done a tremendous job defensively as Platte Valley has committed 23 turnovers in the game. Rush with only 16. Garcia trapped in the backcourt. Front court pass to Rosenbrock. Now to Dunker. Dunker down low. Mickey was wide open and grabbed by Jason Sigmund with 31.6 seconds to go. Sigmund with a second. Mickey to the stripe. Mickey free throw is up and in and out. That's the first free throw they missed in the fourth. Eight out of nine are the bead diggers. Second free throw upcoming. For Ben Mickey. That is up and that is off the back of the rim. And the rebound to Sigmund. Platte Valley the other way. Here is Maxi all the way off the glass. Nobody's fouled. That'll be too little too late with the B-Diggers up by 12. Was that Baker there? That uh... Either way, it's a fourth foul on a B-Digger. The free throw is up and in. For Cameron Maxey, 55-44. Platte Valley will probably still foul, but it's not going to make a difference now. They're down by too much with too little time. Back rim, no. And we do have a foul. Somebody went over the back. And Baker just committed that foul, his fourth. Jones to the stripe. For Platte Valley. Free throws up and in. Now it's a 10-point game. Second free throw is up and that's in. Platte Valley takes a timeout. 55-46. With the B-Diggers leading with 23.9 seconds to go. And we'll keep it right here as Brush has led throughout. They were down 7-6. to six. Then went on an 11-0 run. That changed the whole game. Glad Valley would come back a couple of times. But the B-Diggers never relinquished the lead after that. Well, and it's good to see them rebound back after what Platte Valley did to them at their place. So I'm happy to see the beat diggers step it up, keep their poise. And playing deep into the night here with Rosenbrock to throw it in. All right, just control the ball and get fouled. Rosenbrock can run the baseline. Backcourt bounce pass to Dunker. He's grabbed by Sigmund. Sigmund commits his third. <laughs> Randy and Garcia are giving Kyle a bunch of guff because he didn't throw and he's the distance of the court and he's the quarterback so he should have been able to do that <laughs> Dunker to shoot two yeah he certainly has the arm for it oh yes free throw is in and that's going to do it right there because the B diggers go up by four possessions with 21.3 seconds to go. Second free throw is off the back of the rim. But the ball is tipped by Mickey to Dunker. And Dunker's fouled again. This time by Hoffman. That's a big tip by Ben Mickey. 18.7 to go. Well, and I wouldn't put any of them in there. Yep, that's that's a good move by Ken Garcia. Get all of the beat diggers out of there. Just run the clock out here. Dunker free throws very short. As he pulled the string. <laughs> Second free throw is in. 
for Dunker. And Cameron Alexander, Clay Shaver, and Grayson Simmons check in for the Beat Diggers, holding an 11 point lead with 18.7 seconds to go. He will just let it roll and then chase it down. Maxi on the outside left to Sigmund, cross court to Jones. Backs up for a long one, and that's short. Into the hands of Sigmund, back out to Sitzman. Long three is no good. Austin Garcia with a rebound for the Beat Diggers. Ball is stripped away, and that's the end of the game. That's not going to count on the three made by Jones at the very end. And the Brush Beat Diggers have won the Patriot League Championship. Defeating the Platte Valley Broncos 57-46. to Let's take a two-minute break. We'll wrap it up after this two-minute break right here on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. John Beltran, Jen Goodall back at the University of Northern Colorado in Greeley. The Brush Bee Diggers have done it. They have won the Patriot League Championship for the second straight year. They defeat the Platte Valley Broncos, the top seed, as they beat the top seed for the second straight year, 57-46. Beat Digger post game shows the Beat Diggers are taking pictures out at midcourt after receiving their championship tournament plaque. Brought to you by Buildings by Design. Knowing who you can trust to do a good job is really the tough part nowadays, but when you hire Buildings by Design, you can trust you get the building you want when you want it and at the quality you deserve. Start your build project right. Start with Buildings by Design. Beat Diggers led 15 to 7 after 1, 27 to 22 at the break. Outscored. The Broncos 12-8 in the third for a 39-30 lead and then outscored them in the fourth 18-16. The B-Diggers were led by Kyle Rosenbrock tonight in two categories, 15 points and nine rebounds, 14 for Randy Baker, eight points for Dunker, Needens and Garcia with seven, and then two points apiece for Jake Brown, Trey Cranson, and Jacob Nichols. As for Platte Valley, Parker Gilliland led the way with 19 points. Six for Parker Jones, who grabbed 15 rebounds. Five apiece for Logan Sitzman. Cameron Maxey and Jason Sigmund. Four points for Logan Swan. The B-Diggers with 40 rebounds in a game, as I mentioned, nine by Rosenbrock. And Platte Valley had 31, 15 of those by Parker Jones. And the B-Diggers with 17 turnovers in the game. Platte Valley had 23. And some very good free throw shooting as Platte Valley in the game was 20 of 24. And the Beat Diggers were 22 of 28. So 42 out of a possible 52 made free throws in this game. So both sides certainly getting the job done. Pleasure to be joined. It's been a while since we've spoken with the head coach of the Beat Diggers, Ken Garcia. Coach, they talk about playing your best at the right time. That obviously wasn't happening earlier this year. But you have two 20-plus point wins here against Valley and Frontier Academy. And then you come out today, you're up by 10. Early on in the game, Platte Valley puts together a little bit of a run. But then you win going away by 11 points. And how much added motivation was there from this team? Was there somewhat of a different attitude going into this game after what happened two weeks ago in Kersey? Sure, there's no doubt. We had, uh, you know, we had this game on our minds and. uh uh, you know, the kids really performed well. Our seniors, you know, they were able to step up and, and you know, they knew what was riding on this game. And so, you know, I j we just rode their shoulders and, and they stepped up and, you know, played their hearts out. Did you feel that going into the game that really you had no pressure on you because they figured, well, we just beat up Brush a couple of weeks ago on our home court. Not that they figured they will win this game just as easy or that it would even go as easy for them but you know it was just a bad night and those happen in basketball yeah you know uh, both teams were going on next week regardless of what happened out here so you know I, I don't think there was a whole lot of pressure on the kids uh, I think there was a, a chip on their shoulder because they didn't play well in that first game against Platte Valley so I think that was kind of the driving force to you know and I told them you know win or lose you know we got to go out there and we got to show the people how you know we can play basketball and we didn't do that at Platte Valley so this was an opportunity for us to come back and show the people you know what brush beat digger basketball is all about how much did experience play a part considering last year you're a two seed you beat a one seed in Sterling with this very same group they look very comfortable on this court yeah it, you know early I mean shots the, the, the rim was pretty tight and <laughs> yeah, things, very things, tight. things were bouncing around and 
and and I tried to tell them, you know, we got to go inside, we got to go inside, and, and and they took on that challenge, and so we stopped, you know, shooting a lot from the outside, and we started to get the ball inside, and then we got to the free throw line, and and so, you know, I was pleased with the adjustments that we were able to make throughout the game. Did you feel that you were just a more physical team as well? You had nine more rebounds. You committed six or seven fewer turnovers in the game, and it seemed that you were in Platte Valley's face and not making silly mistakes and committing those turnovers and turning those turnovers into points. Well, you know, I, I think when you when you take those seven seniors and, and they've been playing together so long, you know, that they understand the game of basketball and, and they know how to take care of a game. And, and so I was pleased that we were able to, uh, you know, to run the clock and especially even in the first half, I told him, I said, you know, we had so many people in foul trouble. I said, what we've got to do is we've got to get, the, we've got to get to halftime because we kept fouling and fouling and fouling. And so, you know, I told him, we got to let that clock run. They're in a zone. Let's pull it out and waste some time a little bit. And then let's get to halftime where we can rebuild and, and reload. And then we've got our fouls to give in the second half. Did they basically execute what you said almost to perfection in the third quarter? Because I think you only had one foul in the first five five and a half minutes of that third quarter and Platte Valley was almost in the penalty at that point yeah there's no doubt you know we were we were reaching we just we wanted the ball so badly there in that first half that that we were trying to do anything we could to get to the ball and and we were reaching across the body uh too much and we weren't moving our feet so I told him at halftime I said you know we've got to play defense with our feet we got to stop with the silly fouls and we got to make them earn it because they were just, you know, they were going to the free throw line like crazy, especially in that first half. And so the second half we were able to adjust. And like I said, with the juniors and seniors and the amount of playing time that they've had over the course of, of their uh, high school and, and, and before, you know, they were able to make those adjustments. How much better do you feel about the issue we've talked about the last two years, the free throw shooting? You were 22 out of 28, but you made eight free throws to begin the fourth quarter and eventually you prevented Platte Valley from rallying and anytime right. you have a percentage like that even though Platte Valley was very good but you only missed six free throws out of 28 that's the way you close games and, and you know and I told them all year long when we were working on free throws and when they were running on free throws I told you there's you know I told them there's going to be a game where you're going to have to earn it on the free throw line and you're you know you might be ahead by a little you might be ahead by 10 or 12 points but they're going to have to foul you in order to stop the clock and get possession. And if we can't make the free throws, then we're going to give them an opportunity to get back in the game. And so I thought, you know, the, all the practice paid off because we stepped to the free throw line and we were able to knock them down. Finally, Coach, I'm sure you want to lobby towards those beat digger fans that, hey, let's make this almost standing room only coming up next weekend because you're on your home floor, you're doing it for the second straight year, and the more home support you get, I'm sure the better it is not only for – uh, the team, but everybody else, the players, yourself, and, and the whole uh, Beat Digger basketball community. You bet. Th you know, this is a great opportunity for the community to come together and, and enjoy these kids, you know, especially those seniors, you know, for, for that weekend, for the last time, they're going to be on the floor. So it's a great opportunity for a community to come together and enjoy a night of basketball. Ken, congratulations on another Patriot League Tournament Championship. Thank you. That's Brushhead basketball coach Ken Garcia after the Bee Diggers defeat the Platte Valley Broncos tonight, 57-46. Of course, you can always follow us on Twitter at KSIR Sports and our 1010 KSIR Sports Facebook page with the Bee Diggers defeating the top seed Platte Valley Broncos. Let's bring in back uh, my partner here, Jen Goodall, as we just spoke with head coach Ken Garcia and the Bee Diggers did a nice job in this game. They closed the game out. And they did what they had to do. They held Platte Valley to 46 points after Platte Valley scored 65 just two weeks ago. So a quantum improvement defensively as well. Well, it was kind of a repeat of what the girls did, too, in their redemption game. So I'm very proud of both of our groups playing today. They kept their poise, they kept their heads, and they got the job done. And, you know, I just it's fun when you have these kind of games, too, because you have old players that come back. I just got done talking to Lisha Nichols and Darla Rosenbrock a little bit and reminiscing, and, you know, Lisha's doing some good things at CSU so she's actually they're looking for an NIT or an NCAA bid actually so it's kind of fun to see those guys too all right here's what will happen on Sunday the 32 team field will be determined for both the boys and girls the girls will be on the road as they defeated Frontier Academy today 52 to 33 to earn third place in the Patriot League tournament the brush boys will be home we don't know where they will be seated but they will be a top eight seed there's no question about that they will be a top eight seed and hopefully not at number eight. Hopefully anywhere from maybe five or six 
because after all, if you're seated eighth and you get out of that, then you've got to face the number one right. already in the quarterfinals uh, once you get to the Elite Eight. So we'll find out on Sunday. You can check out again. Check us out on Twitter. We'll have that up as soon as possible. Uh, broadcast times and everything that we'll be doing at KSIR Sports and again our Facebook page at 1010 KSIR Sports as well. Outstanding job as always by our sound engineer and producer Rose Condes. For Jen Goodall, I'm John Beltran. The final score in this Patriot League Tournament Championship game for the University of Northern Colorado and Greeley. The Brush Bee Diggers win it for the second straight year, defeating the Platte Valley Broncos 57-46 on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com.